Ready to see a comic book page getting inked? You need to check this video out. Hello everyone, it's me, your old pal Max West. As you know, I draw comics and I do children's picture books. Picking up where we left off, I'm going to be inking this Sunnyville Stories page and after that I'm going to be coloring it. Now, <clears throat> We're going to be doing something a little different. Unlike some the markers I usually use, or the pen, the dipping pen that I usually do my uh, other work with, I'm going to be using technical drawing pens. These are rapidographs. This is a type of pen that gives a fixed width line. Yeah, you can't get the variety of lines that you would get with a... Um, with a brush or with a dipping pen. <clears throat> right. First we're going to use this really big one. This is uh, two millimeters. This gives thick lines and we're going to use that for the borders here. <clears throat> this is how I usually do Sunnyville stories. Let's see, I want to pull back and see if we can give you guys, you viewers out there, some more uh, better view. All right. <clears throat> so using my T-square, with comic pages like Sunnyville Stories or Dominic and Claire, I use the T-square rather than drawing the panels free-handed. Some people don't like technical drawing pens like the Koinor Rapidograph. Yeah, the line is quite cold and mechanical as opposed to the more organic line that you get out of a brush or a dipping pen. Still, though, it has its uses. Since I need a nice uniform line when I do panels here on the page, The technical drawing pen is perfect for this. <clears throat> the main reason I don't use these much other than the rather uniform lines I get is these things are a pain to clean. They get clogged up if you don't take care of them. You have to flush them out. You gotta use various things like pen cleaner. I use that as well as uh, water to flush out ink. These also can get damaged pretty bad. I had to uh, discard a pen recently, a pen point, because a part inside got all bent up and I was unable to uh, do anything else with it. <clears throat> I couldn't draw with it. All right, I'm gonna let this uh, dry. The usual order I take on a comic page, be it a comic book or a comic strip, I ink the panels first, then I do the balloons, I do the letters, then the panels, then the speech balloons, and then everything else inside those panels. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just letting this sit and dry for a while, for a few, for a, for a little bit. You know, try different tools and see what uses for you. What work, what, use what works for you. I mean, some like a technical drawing pen. Some like to try any variety of markers. Some like to ink with a brush, kind of like this. Others use dipping pens. You know, try out different things. See what works. All right, I think this ought to work. One moment here as I'm going to get ready now. We're going to uh, ink the other, other lines here. And I'm going to work on the balloons, the speech balloons, not rubber balloons that you blow up. No, this is the smaller pen. This one, the .50 millimeter, I'm going to use for inking the balloons and the characters. All right.
And I and usually when I'm inking, it's not unusual for me to keep turning the page around in all kinds of directions. There's nothing wrong with that. And again, you know, you use what works for you. Later, on my own and off camera, I'm going to be working on more Poison Ivy Gulch comic strips as well as my picture book. This is Memorial Day weekend. While other people are off, I draw. And that's the thing if you want to be any kind of artist, be you someone who paints and hangs things in galleries, or whether you want to make a 300-page graphic novel, or you want to put up that cool web comic with the busty women and the giant robots, or whether you want to illustrate a children's book, you'll work all kinds of wacky hours. You don't necessarily get evenings, nights, holidays, or weekends off. <laughs> and manga artists over in Japan, they know this all too well. <clears throat> all right. Moving on, <clears throat> we're going to use the uh, Rapidograph pen, the smaller one. I'm going to do the balloons, and then I'm going to work in the uh, other stuff there. So let's get zoom in. Oh. All right. <clears throat> I'm only using the, these pens because this is going to be colored. I usually work in black and white. Most of the stuff I use, I work with the dipping pens for my, uh, for my comics. <clears throat> speech balloons there for both Rusty and Sam. using mixed media on the comics page. I used India ink applied with a uh, nib pen. I'm drawing everything else with a technical drawing pen. And later I'm going to go over this with professional design markers for colors as well as throw in a little bit of um, a little bit of colored pencil in there. Again, there's no right or wrong tools for drawing comics. As long as you get the basic skills down and you train your hand and your mind, there's nothing you can't accomplish. I may not be the best out there, but I'm one of the most determined people. In spite of many failures, I just keep going. I don't care if I fail. At least if I fail, then I still know I tried rather than sit around wondering what could have been, or moaning how everyone else is better and how everyone else can draw. Oh, why didn't I do it too? Why didn't I draw? All right. <clears throat> yeah, now I'm cut. As I told you, I draw with nib pen, and this has kind of spoiled me a bit. I gotta admit, 
it, it looks different from the usual s stuff I do. I mean, let's see if I can zoom in there. I mean, yeah, look at those speech balloons. I mean, they look much thinner. Not quite as lively as the as when I draw them with a uh, Speedball 512 nib, which is my workhorse. All right. Again, I, I'm just giving you this for the purposes of demonstration, as in addition to be colored, I want to show you other tools you can use to draw comics with. You know? Maybe there's, there are people out there who, who swear by these types of pens. Or may, maybe you like them. I know Robert Crumb, the famous uh, underground cartoonist, he, he, he draws a lot of work with dipping pens, and, you know, to me, that guy can work so many wonders. I mean, his draftsmanship is just amazing. All right, see? The inking has begun. I know Jason Shiga... He uses technical drawing pens, too, in his work. So when you're making comics, do the best you can. You know, ignore people who criticize you or put you down. I have a friend out there who draws manga style stuff. Whereas I'm, uh, I'm clearly Western influenced, he's more manga. He criticizes me sometimes and my work. It is a little annoying, but I know he's a good person. And he never means any harm or, or disrespect to me. See? That's looking pretty good there. Alright, let's keep going. After this video, I'm going to wait a while. I'm going to let all this dry. I'll erase it off screen. And I'll apply some of the black areas, like the eyes and the shadows. For that, I'm probably going to be using some of the uh, brush markers I have here. Yeah, for this video, I'm keeping everything silent. I like to have my TV on, you know, playing either some older movies, or some of the classic comedies that inspire me, like the Marx Brothers or the Three Stooges, or something funny on, like Mystery Science Theater, Garfield, Alf. You know, some people just can't ink that way because it's too distracting. Again, it's best to use what works for you. You know, if you like to have music on or, or the TV on playing while, while you draw, then do it.
Do what works best for you. Don't ignore people who put your work down. I've said it many times before, I'll repeat it again, anyone can draw. I mean, I can draw, you can draw, your neighbor down the street can draw. You know that, that guy out there who's probably somewhere in Manhattan, New York, watching this video at 3 a.m. in his basement. Yeah, I'm talking to you, you know who you are. Anyone can draw. It is a skill that can be learned. All you have to do is apply yourself. Practice. Get pointers. There's no shortage of resources out there. Now, if you can't afford art school or even night school, there's plenty of instructional videos out there, both for sale as well as those you can watch for free here on YouTube. Practice, learn all you can, absorb what is useful, ignore what is useless. Just make sure you're committed you really need drive because all the help in the world, all the encouragement, all the instruction will not do you any good unless you're willing to help yourself as well. It's taken me a long time to learn to draw and really, in spite of how far I've come, you know, drawing, that, that takes a lifetime to master. That's not something you can pick up in a few days, a few weeks, or even a few months. Although I've seen some impressive prodigies out there. people out there who don't like my work, they even, they even launch this big campaign of harassment against me, I ha yet I, I have fans, I have some books in libraries, I funded some very successful Kickstarters. So I did ultimately prove those people wrong. And it was largely because I believed in myself. I believed I can do it. It's like Doc Emmett Brown said in um, Back to the Future, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. look here and see how we're doing. Yeah, that's looking pretty snappy there. Yeah, this is going to be colored in, so that's why I'm using the technical drawing pen. Granted, this doesn't look as lively as the dipping pen. <laughs> but 
But that's one of the um, it's one of the things you learn as being an artist. It's the right tool for the right job. Yeah, I'm just inking in Sam here. That's Sam starting to come to life there. Pardon me, I'm just going to stand up for a moment. When you're doing drawing for long periods of time, take frequent breaks. Stand up, stretch, rotate your arms and your wrists. I mean, your future self will thank you. See? Sam's really coming to life there. Yeah, she's uh, reacting here in this panel to the punchline of Rusty's joke. Sam is the straight man, the Rusty's wise guy. You know, like Abbott and Costello, Martin and Lewis, Laurel and Hardy. Rusty and Samantha of Sunnyville Stories. They're basically the straight man and the wise guy pair. I'm just tapping into a familiar archetype that people can identify and relate to. I mean, with that mechanic, you get these characters. You understand them. You know what makes them tick. Rusty wants to be accepted. That's what he wants. And he finds humor is a good way. That's why he says all that funny stuff. And also, much like with Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, it's a coping mechanism as it helps him uh, you know, deal with his day-to-day -day life of having to go to school or to obey his parents. Yeah, I was kind of that way, too. Making jokes and one-liners to get through the drudgery of my life. Yeah, it was very much a coping mechanism for me, much like it is for Rusty here. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Sam looks alive there now that she's been inked in. I'll just finish these, and then I'm going to wrap the video up as we're going to let this dry for a while, maybe a good hour or so. As if I still try to um, erase everything while the ink is wet, <laughs> I'm just going to make a big mess out there on the page. Rusty wants to be accepted. You know, when others get mad at him, like Sam, he, he kind of tends to take that harder than usual because he, he thinks that others, like Sam, have rejected him. And that goes against his need to be accepted. Rusty is a pretty deep character. I mean, I, I put a lot of thought into the him, as well as a lot of thought into the universe of Sunnyvale. It's kind of, this flies in the face of people who say I'm very stupid and I can't draw or write. Yeah, well I can't control what people think. Simply slamming my work without reading it or going into ad hominem attacks against me. I mean, that's really not right. But as I, I, I've learned from, you know, making all these comics, I've been drawing on a regular basis since, since 2002, and I've been drawing comics since 2009, with Sunnyvale launching in 2010, no, I've learned you, you can't take it personally. You can't please everybody. That's why I'm going to work on pleasing the people that I can, like my fans. And yes, I do have them. All right, there we go. Uh, Rusty is looking alive now that he's been inked in. I'm going to do these last few pages here. <clears throat> Also have to think about what colors I'm going to use. Rusty is probably going to get red or maybe blue for his uh, shirt there. While Sam, she's going to get purple colors. Oh, kind That purple is kind of a feminine color. So that works for her just fine. I know a lot of color artwork I've done with her. It's either been purple or pink. I mean, she's a girl, and a very pretty girl at that, something that Rusty has noticed. <laughs> and some of you eagle-eyed readers who've read some of my comics have been noticing, I've been um, hinting that Sam has feelings for Rusty. Rusty's a great guy. He's funny. Sam's need is that she really wants to take care of others. I mean, she's a nurturer. She grew up in a big family. She's popular as a babysitter, as she's babysat many of the children in town. She takes care of her little brother Jason and her baby sister Anna. She not only genuinely enjoys Rusty's company and finds him hilarious, Sam sees Rusty as, as someone that she can take care of. 
That's why she likes being with him. She also likes to keep an eye on him, make sure he stays out of trouble and doesn't say anything much too stupid. So besides being a friend and a companion, she's kind of a minor, a minder for Rusty. That is to say, a conscience. It's my intent to eventually redraw the very first Sunnyville comic. Now that my artwork has gotten much better, contrary to what some idiots out there say, there we go. Now one more panel, then I'll break for a while. When I eventually post this online, both to the Sunnyville blog and elsewhere, I will be, um, I will be using the, oh, while this will be hand-colored, I will use the computer as well, you know, to retouch things. Strengthen the colors of the page. Maybe even put in a few uh, backgrounds here. Yeah, they're, they're kind of minimalist, as you might have noticed right now. Again, that's a stylistic choice. That's not because I'm stupid or lazy in spite of what other people think. I mean, much like Peanuts by Charles Schultz, I, I, I don't want to junk up the uh, backgrounds and distract from the characters. I mean, the characters are the focus. Again, we all have different drawing styles. I mean, mine is pretty simple. Some out there, like J. Scott Campbell, draw realistically. Some, like my friend Theridian, a pretty cool guy. He's more Japanese-influenced. His style mimics anime and manga. And there we go. We have finished inking the page. There's that panel there. I'm going to take, uh, we're going to take one more look at this page and then I'm going to uh, end this video. All right, let's get some more light there. All right, let's pull in. Let's, let's zoom in. All right, let's see here. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there we go. All right, so once this is dry, I'm going to erase it, erase the pencil lines. Then we start on the final stage. I'll put in some of the black areas first and then add color. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. If you want to see more of Sunnyville stories, just check out the link below. It's a comic book series of mine. Until next time, everybody, it's me, your old pal Max West, saying goodbye.